Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I'm going to show you my version of a one sheet folio. So basically, I'm using one sheet of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and a couple other little supplies, but that's the main part of this. And so it's a little folio that has a pocket that opens up and has a pocket on the inside. So I'm not going to show you the whole thing right at the front because I want to show you the whole tutorial. So I've got a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And the first thing that I did was I determined how big I wanted this to be. And I wanted it to fit inside my journal and it's going to fit in a large pocket. So I decided that the height I want it to be is seven and a half inches. Now I'm using my paper cutter to score with. So if you have a scoreboard and you would rather use that, then be my guest and do so. So I'm scoring this at seven and a half inches from the top and then I'm going to slide this over so I like to go ahead and crease my fold just a little bit so I know and I believe that I want to put this where it's two inches and cut off this piece here and then I'm going to back this up about a half an inch and score this piece. All right, so we've got two scores, one at seven and a half inches, one at a half an inch from the outside edge after we cut off a two inch strip. Do you follow? <laughs> All right, so now what I want to do is sometimes it gets confusing which way you want to score and fold and I know that what I want to happen is I want this to fold over and this become the flap so I fold my pocket up just so I know and I'm going to score at five inches and then I'm going to slide this over to 10 inches and score again while I've got my paper cutter out, I'm going to take this strip and cut it to be seven and a quarter inches. And I have a little slap left over. I may use it somewhere else, some other. All right, so now I have all these pieces. I know that this piece, because it's scrap it paper and it's rather thin, I've got an old book page here and I will glue these together. So I'll just put a little bit of glue. I'm not being meticulous because I am going to sew, but if you are not going to sew, you may want to put your papers together really well and smoothly so you don't have to worry about the edges coming up. I'll cut these apart. So it just makes it a little bit thicker by using a book page in the back of it. So I've glued these two pieces together and I'll flip this over and this little piece I want to fold to the inside and that gives the inside of this pocket of the folio a little bit of strength so I'm just going to glue it in place now I'm going to go to all of the folds that I creases that I made so this will be five inches here and then this should fold over so now you can see the beginnings of the folio. I will go ahead and go around the outside edges with some Distress Ink Walnut Stain. I don't usually do the insides. If you like that look, you can most certainly. I do plan to do some decorating on the inside. So I'm just slightly adding a little bit to that. All right, so this piece is gonna be a pocket on the front. And I want to add a little embellishment. So I've got a piece of fabric here. So probably about that long. And I've got a word from Norella. These are some French sayings that she offers in her shop. So I'll grab a little bit of glue here and add it to the corner here, this little fabric. And then I want to glue this to where I have a little bit of a gap all the way around. And what I'm going to do next is go to the sewing machine and sew. I will sew around this outside edge and then around the same. I will also sew across here 
then I will close it and sew around this outside edge. I have a standard sewing machine, standard needle, standard thread. I do recommend that you always use new thread, not old thread that's been around forever in grandma's sewing drawer because it has a tendency to break whenever it's under the tension in the sewing machine. I've got mine set on a zigzag stitch and this is just the default which I believe is 3.5 by 1.4 on stitch width and length. And I, again, just sew. So I don't really worry about what I'm putting under my needle. I would recommend that if you're gluing something, then sewing it, that you let the glue dry completely or only put glue where you know you're not going to sew. I'm going to go ahead and get a start around this outside edge. When I get to the end of a piece that I want to go all the way around, I leave the needle down onto the right side if I'm doing a zigzag stitch. So then I can swing this around with the needle down and start stitching again. That piece is ready. Now I'll do the foundation. What I like to do is put just a dot, not a lot, just a little bit of a dot of glue I don't want a lot because I don't want it to uh, gum up my sewing machine. And then I will press this in place. Give it just a moment to adhere. And then I'll start sewing on the outside. So these pieces have been sewn. In case you were wondering where I got the scrapbook paper, I was gifted this a long time ago. It's a K and Company 365 papers best of k and company it's really old i've had it for a while now and my goal this year is to try to use up as many scrapbook papers as i can so i'm trying to find little tutorials and techniques that i can use up some of that scrapbook paper to use with my junk journals all right so now what i do is fold this over and fold this back make sure it's all working I have a scrap from a book page this is from an old Bible and I don't know I just like the way it looked to have a little bit of some interest on the inside so here's some junk my book page and I'm just putting a little bit of glue down it really serves no purpose other than to be decorative so I'm just sliding that under the pocket I'm placing it just below the stitches there and then I've got a few rubber stamps from Beeline Designs I have the what is this one nest bird nest and egg cube so it has all these different stamps in with it and we're going to use most of these if not all of them that I have laid out here so I'm going to start with the bird nest I'm going to use my walnut stain because I just wanted it to be in the background and we'll stamp this one here. And then I've got the bird, which is the, let me turn this over, warbler, W-A-R-B-L-E-R. I have a whole section of bird stamps on my website. All right, this one I wanna stamp right about here. I've got one of the eggs, so we'll stamp it, oh, up here. I've got a feather stamp from that same set. We'll stamp it, let's put it right here. And let's put one right about here. I have a different egg from the set. And I'll stamp it over here just for some interest on our page so that portion is decorated I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my pocket on the front and I'll just glue it on three sides and while that is adhering we'll put the items on the inside so I made this little spot here so it ends up being a pocket so I had some blackberry dyed paper so it's a really pretty shade of purple and i cut a one and a half inch strip from an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and i sewed a little piece of fabric and i stamped from the flying which one is this one no silhouette cube 
So it has all these four different little birdies on there. And I thought that would be cute right in here. Then on this side, I have from, I don't know which kit it is from, in that I used all of the Amarillo Rose digital journal kit from Calco Collage. By the way, you can also now get that as a cut and paste ephemera book. It's printed and it's on Amazon. And the links will be in the description box if you're wanting to order from Norella. You can get it on Amazon or you can get her digitals from her Etsy shop. But this is one of the Amarillo Rose elements and I stitched just across the top just for some interest. This is one of the envelopes that is in her kit and I just put it together. I did stamp, I think this is French script that I put on the inside and folded that up and put it, let's put it this way. Then in the middle, I used another one of Norella's images. I stitched around the outside edge and then I ended up gluing this on top of an four by six index card that I colored with some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I just kind of water colored on there and I stamped it with this little branch that I have in my stamp collection. And I use an artist trading card size and I used the heart flower and a little piece of fabric and made a pocket. On top of it, I stamped it with that little branch again. And then this is from the journal quartet number two. That's going to go in the middle. Then when you close this and close the flap, I used one of Norella's mason jars images and put that in here. And that closes the flap up. Of course, I got to train it just a little bit. And then this whole unit can then slip into this pocket that I made in my journal. So I can get it to go in there. So it makes it kind of fluffy, but at the same time, it's somewhat thin because I use the scrapbook paper. And then you can pull this out, and then you have all this writing space that you can use. Well, I hope you'd enjoyed seeing my take on a one sheet folio. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, use the description box below to get links to the products that I used today, as well as my Facebook groups. And let's see what else. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and on my website. Hey, if you didn't join my newsletter, do go over to my website and log in there and create or click the button to join my newsletter. What else? Thank you so much for watching. Again, thumbs up and subscribe. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bye, everybody.